It was meant to be a sort of um, chemical weapons laboratory, a sort of building on the outskirts of Damascus, a couple of buildings 15 miles west of Homs. I've been in that area, I didn't see anything there, but uh, maybe they are there. You know, but these are pretty insignificant. The thing to bear in mind about the, these chemical weapons is, you know, they're a pretty minimal part of the state arsenal in Syria. I mean, half a million people have been killed in Syria since 2011, and a maximum of about 1,900 have been killed by uh, poison gas. So, I mean, this is very bad. I mean, it's, uh, it's awful. But, you know, it's, it's, you could abolish the use of chemical weapons in Syria and it really wouldn't have any effect, significant effect, on the level of violence. This was carried out as a, um, a show of strength. It was sort of a show of weakness that they went, you know, they could have attacked targets with Russians in them, they didn't. With Iranians, they didn't. With Lebanese Hezbollah, they didn't. The Syrian army, they didn't. They could have attacked sort of iconic centers like the presidential palace or defense ministry in Damascus. They didn't. So, you know, it shows their political weakness that they didn't feel they could attack those, uh, those particular targets. Eventually we'll have an agreement, you know, which will be based on negotiations, will be dependent on the balance of power at the time, and will be based also on what happens on the battlefield. Now Assad has basically won, he controls all of Damascus, all of Aleppo, uh, Homs, the major cities are under his control. Um, but yeah, it's a good question. How will this war end? How could it end? And one of the striking features about the present crisis over the attack on the uh, three chemical weapons uh, facilities in Syria is there's little talk about sort of how to end the war in general, but that's the only thing that will work. Ultimately, it will be done. Uh, but at the moment, you know, the US backs the Kurds, wants Assad to go, but Assad obviously isn't going to go. Uh, wants it to reduce the Iranian influence. How do they do that? They can't do that. Uh, the Turks want to eliminate the Kurds in northern Syria. Maybe they won't be able to do that. So you have a series of confrontations and problems which aren't really soluble at the moment. There's always been tremendous uh, hypocrisy. Look at the siege of Mosul, you know, minimum maybe 11,000 civilians killed. Raqqa destroyed, you know, somehow this has not created great international concern in the way that there's tremendous concern about the bombardment of eastern Ghouta. So, you know, in many ways these things are exactly the same. You know, as I said, a siege by Assad or a siege by the Americans or by ISIS or anybody else, when you look at the result, which is a heap of ruins, it's all very similar. Um, Trump, you know, yeah, it, it does create great uncertainty because you have these very bellicose tweets and then you have, you know, actually a much more moderate, much more cautious policy. And whose policy is it? Is it Trump's? Or is it the Pentagon's or whatever? I think in general, that, you know, the media, a lot of the Democrats probably underestimate Trump. I think Trump is a genuine isolationist, not necessarily the people around him. And also he has a sort of instinctive approach to events and he can see that staying in Iraq, staying in Syria means serious long-term trouble. Now, this is true. Uh, and there are people who will know a lot more about the Middle East than Trump does, but still don't see that. Well, practically everybody I know, I wonder what their future is. You know, because it's unstable, you know, if you're a Kurd, what happens if the uh, Turks move in? There was one person from Duma, a human rights uh, lawyer, uh, I last saw in 2013, and she was uh, speaking about, uh, very eloquently, about uh, the uh, chemical attack on uh, Eastern Ghouta, which she blamed on Assad, uh, probably with good reason. Uh, so an absolute committed and eloquent op opponent of Assad, but she also opposed the army of Islam, which controlled Duma. So a few weeks after I'd last seen her on television, she disappeared. Uh, she's probably dead. 
uh, people like that live in my mind, who tried to remain principled opponents of the Assad government, but critics also of the uh, parties that want to replace Assad. And, you know, they're dead or they're silent or they've fled the country. If you end the war in Syria, then other things will begin to stabilize. Iraq is already better than it was. It's not all pessimistic. But this foreign intervention is continually stirring the pot. And what you never see or hear is people really discussing uh, how to end this war.